In this video, we're going to introduce a um, concept which is necessary in order for us to take a problem and be able to write the functions um, and then be able to minimize that and then eventually implement the digital circuits. Um, this, these are these these forms of equations we need to learn how to write are referred to as um, either sum of products, which is shortened to SOP, or they are referred to as product of sum. These are pure form, and they are referred ref, referred to as standard, standard, or canonical form and so so we have two in this video we're going to focus on some product in many ways some products uh, and writing it is um, more natural to the way uh, humans think uh, the product of some that we're going to come back and treat that in later videos it's it's a bit opposite of what we are thinking but still works and in some cases is very useful for us to do that so before we go too far let's go ahead and start with the uh, example um, you we can start with the two-bed example but the two-bed example is so trivial that it really doesn't do justice the smaller the smallest example we can do to explain this canonical form is a three variable um, um, system or three input variable system and um, so we're going to go ahead and start with that and um, walk through it and as we walk through uh, the process of writing the equation write the canonical form for this problem we're going to start introducing a lot of the definitions that would be necessary as we move forward let's let's start by kind of saying what what is the problem that we are trying to um, work with so we are being asked to write a function write a binary function that is true write a function that is one only when exactly two out of three input R1 okay so they want you to build a system that when two input is equal to one um, the output becomes a one so as we've done in the past and this is no different the very first thing we want to do after we understand the problem is to do a truth table so and and as we've talked about before truth tables are done by um, you put the inputs down and and just just so I'm true to what I've been asking what will I'll be asking uh, folks and recommending to folks to do is that one of the first thing you want to do to make clear for what the system is like you want to do a system diagram system diagram is a box basically where you show what the inputs are and let's say in this case we're gonna say the inputs are X Y and z then we only have one output that is f of x y and z and based on the problem statement if two of these input variables are equal to one then we're going to get a one coming out of it so let's go ahead and start by putting the input in here so input is x y and z and they could be 0 0 0 0 0 1 uh, 0 1 0 1 0 0 again we are basically walking through all the binary uh, combinations in sequence so those those should be um, oh look like I forgot one right here and that's the reason we do the binaries in order just to make sure we haven't forgotten it so I've got one two three four five six and seven so i've got all my eight combination i have three inputs 
Therefore, I will have 2 to the power of 3, which is I'm going to have 8 rows. Okay. And then I have my functions. And the function was set to, this is my output. And my output is set to be um, 1 only when two inputs are 1. So that basically means this is 0. This is 0. This is 0. And this one is a 1. And then the next one is a zero. Next one is a one. And the next one is a one. And the final one has three ones, so it's a zero. So that's what I want to build. Now, in here, we are we are focused on sum of products. In order for us to do a sum of products, we have to uh, figure out kind of what what is what is a product. So the product or so, so the standard it's a little bit bigger. So the standard um, product term is basically a term that is one only when these conditions are true. So a product term for the row 0, 0, 0, it's going to be the only time this is the only um, expression of these variables and together that is 1 when x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0 is x product of x naught, product of y naught, product of z naught. Okay, let's, let's move down. For the 1, it would be x naught and y not and z now if i plug 0 0 1 in this expression you see we're going to get a 1 and then we're going to go to a 2 hopefully you're starting to see the pattern that is developing here so a 2 plugged in here a 0 1 0 plugged in here gives me a 1 so that's what that's these are called product term and is referred to as a product term so let's go ahead and go down and do the rest. Three will give us this. Uh, four will give us this. Five will give us this. And six will give us this. And up of finally seven. Seven being the decimal equivalent of 111 put in here. So these are called problem uh, product term. They also have another name. They're also referred to as minimum or as abbreviation min term. Why do they call them min term? Well, they call them min term because this, this term, x naught, y naught, z naught, every one of those terms allows us to refer to a single um, single row of the table. There is no smaller part of a table that we can uniquely refer to unless we don't refer to anything on the table. So a row is the smallest part of the table. That's why they call it the min term. To make life easier, sometimes when we got a larger term, this is only three terms. How about if we got four inputs, five inputs? It could be really complicated to do this table. So they've come up with an easier way to represent this. This is this min term is referred to as min term zero. A little m with a zero indicating which row we are talking about, which min term we are talking about. The mid min term, the next min term, of course, is going to be m1, m2, and as you m3, and m4, m5, m6, and m7. These are called the min term. For this now it's kind of uh, so so okay great so now we have the standard terms referring to each row so if I want to write if I want to write a the function the function f of x y z that is only true in this row in this row and in this row based on the definition of the problem we had to work with all i have to do is just write and i'm going to use a different color so it's easier to see all i need to include is the cases where 
the function is one. So if this is the case, I want the function to be one. This is the case, I want the function to be one. And in this case, I want the function to be one. So all I have to do is write all of this. So I'm gonna write x naught and y and z, that's three, plus x and y naught and z, and x and y and z naught. Now I've got a complete um, function, and this function indeed performs the requirement that was given to me, where two other variable, x, or, uh, x and y, or x and z, or x, or x and uh, y and z are one, it's gonna be one. All other cases will not be. And this is referred to, as we, as we started discussing it earlier, this is referred to as the standard or canonical form of the function. So if someone asks you to write the standard, oops, lost the pen. If someone asks you to write a standard or canonical, Form of the uh, form product. This is this is sum of products. Why do they call it sum of products? If you notice, products refer to the end. So you have bunch of products, and these are some of it. The reason is called a standard because every variable appears in every term. That has to be the case. So this is a standard or canonical uh, uh, sum of product. Um, so great we got that uh, uh, done now that's great and you know we'll some we love to write it in this way um, but sometimes we, we could make our life easier and instead of now if for a three variable that's not a big deal but if it gets bigger it could be uh, uh, easier to write it instead of writing it this way we just say I got min term three or with min term fi uh, five or in the midterm six. So I know this is, you know, the midterms are corresponding. If this term corresponds to this midterm, corresponds to this, corresponds to this one. We call this one, uh, because it's easier, we're, when it's, uh, we refer to it as, as a compact midterm four. Okay, so this is a, this is the standard of the canonical SOP. This is the compact of min term sum of products, okay? Now, sometimes we get even less, uh, want to write it even more compact. So we write this one as sum. We use the sum uh, summation um, um, signal, uh, symbol. And then we say it's a min term, and the min terms include three, five, and six. And this one is called the explicit compact minter. Compact minter sum of products. And then then they look at this and say, this is really redundant. If I'm doing sum of products and I know what I'm gonna put in there is sum of products, so why bother? So all I have to do is write it as sum of three, five, six. And they call this one implicit compact form. Now, are they any different? Are they saying the different thing? No, it just depends on what your preference is and what you want to do next. Uh, of course, this would be the easiest way to look at it. All it's saying is the third row, fifth row, and the sixth row of my function is one. All of the places is zero. Um, this... Um, this uh, canonical or standard form is useful if you um, need to look at the variables and see if the variables are inverted or not. There's a few steps here to get to that, but we can easily go back and forth between them. So just to, just to recap it, there are th th four ways we can write this. Each have a name, each have a purpose. Now this form, the very first form we came up is called the standard or canonical form. The next one is the compact form. The next one is explicit compact form. And the last one is in implicit 
compact form. And last one is probably the most common one we usually write and use. Okay, great. Now, one of the things that falls out of this is if I want the same function inverted, if I want the inversion of this function, all I have to do is just say in inverse of x, y, and z, since, since 3, 5, and 6 are the places it's 1, if I want to find out where the zeros are, I simply say 0, 1, 2, 4, and 7. And that gives me all the zeros. And that's fine. So this really, once I have the implicit form, it's really easy to go back and forth. That, that kind of brings us to the end of the definition as, well, as far as the, um, as the focus of this part goes, which was sum of products. You have products and you have summing them together. And this is a standard form because all the variables are present. We can use, we can use the summation 3, 5, or 6 as a representation uh, to make it much easier to see.